Uh, let's look at the Word of God today. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 8 to 13. Isaiah 49, verse 8 to 13. It's in the New uh, it's in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 8 to verse 13. Uh, if you are fine, also, uh, if you can read it together, I would like you to read together this Bible verse. Uh, let's read it all together. Thus says the Lord, In a time of favor I have answered you. In a day of salvation I have helped you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritage, saying to the prisoners, Come out, to those who are in darkness, appear. They shall feed along the ways, or on all bare heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of waters will guide them. And I will make mount, all mountains a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Behold, these shall come afar from behold, and this from the north and from the west, and this from the land of Cyrene. Sing up for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth of mountains into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. Amen. Today's title is To Apportion the Desolate Heritage. To Apportion the Desolate Heritage. Uh, this is our theme for 2024, as you know. And I wanted, I wanted to share with you together uh, what do we need to hold on today. Uh, first of all, uh, we had come to this place because God has given us answers. You should never forget that. The reason why you're alive today is because God has given you answers. What kind of answer God has given to you? First, He had called you. He had called you to be His people. What does that mean? He, God Himself, gave you salvation. God Himself gave you grace so you can accept Him as the Lord. So this is the first answer you have received and now you're here. Sometimes we think that God is with me but I feel alone. Right? Sometimes we feel like I'm doing all my best for God but nothing actually is working out. That happens to anyone. But instead of thinking of what is not happening, we need to first think about what God did first in my life. He had called you to be His people, to be His children. So salvation came first in your life. And second thing, we are continuously listening is that He will restore everything. What do you think when you hear that? That He will restore everything. Do you think money is going to come back? Fame will come back? Or somehow problems will be solved? We had received true restoration already. And what was the first thing? He had called you. He had changed you to be now children of God. But restore everything first is spiritual. Before the physical things are restored, 
the spiritual things must be restored first. Don't forget that. You can have everything in this earth, but if you're spiritually dead, nothing is actually restored. Don't forget that. But today, in the Word, we have received this, that He will restore, He will give you a portion of a land, in other words, but what kind of land? A desolate land. What is desolate? Nobody wants to go. Nobody's there. Nobody wants to help this place. Nobody has interest in that place. That's what we call desolate. But God said, I will give you a portion to these desolate places to you. As a heritage. So, we need to know why God is giving us this word. Don't forget that. God is giving us this word because we are in that journey now. We are actually receiving that kind of answer. You can never think that I am behind and everybody's ahead of me. That's not true. We are in the same stream right now. The only thing that you need to know is you must realize that He had called you first to make your life His. So Isaiah 41, uh, 49 verse 1. I want you to go to Isaiah 49 verse 1. It says, Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. What does that mean? God is calling all these people from all the nations to listen to what? To the gospel. Just looking at this place, how many countries are here? We have Panama, Venezuela, Guatemala, Mexico, United States, Chile, South Africa, American Russian, Russian Korean, she speaks Chinese, Philippines, and we have Siam, Pakistan, and me from Panama. She speaks Japanese. This is not just a normal answer, you know. You need to understand. You might think that I came here because I wanted to come today. No, that's not true. He says, listen to me, O coastlands. He says like that. Jehovah God is calling you to come and worship Him, to really know who is true God. Who do you need to worship? Don't forget, our church, our uh, English worship will receive these answers. But now we need to get prepared, right? Let's go to the first part of the message today. God has given us a promise. Promise of what? Restoration. As I told you, everyone wants restoration. Everyone. Not a single person in this earth don't want restoration. Everyone wants restoration. But what kind of restoration do we need to have first? Isaiah 49, verse 8. It says, In a time of favor, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I will keep you and I give you as a covenant to the people to establish the land to apportion the desolate heritages. The first restoration is what? Your life, which is salvation now to you. And to those desolate places that nobody are nobody's interested, God will restore it for you. Nobody, nobody cares about your country. Nobody cares about your problems or your family. But God is saying, I will restore it for you. The only way to have this is 
He needs to protect you. So he says he will restore it for you, but he will protect you. He will guide you for this. That's why Isaiah 49, verse 9. I want you to go and read together again. I will read it out loud, but you can follow along. It says, Saying to the prisoners, Come out. To those who are in darkness, appear. They shall feed along the ways. On all, on all bare highs shall be their pasture. You will save people that are in darkness. You will save people that are suffering with spiritual problems. And you will make them walk in what? In pastures. Do you understand? Do you understand who you are, actually? You might have hundred problems in your life right now. But God is telling you that you will save these people that are in darkness. That are in spiritual problems. God is saying that to you. Not just to the pastor, right? He's saying this to everyone who are his children. So you are included too. That's why, let's go. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 10. What does it say? It says, They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. Once you are restored, and once this restoration comes to you, it says you will never hunger nor thirst anymore. Are you thirsty every day? I was thirsty today when I woke up for water, right? Raise a, raise a hand, someone who didn't drink water today in the morning. You? I guess right, right? But at the end of the day, you would drink water, right? Once or twice. But I'm saying, people are in hunger, in thirst that is never quenched. A hunger and a thirst that with water cannot be quenched. Do you understand what it means? But it says, now with this restoration, you will never have hunger, neither thirst. Neither wind nor sun will strike you again. Before, problems will give me so many things that I will never be again. I will never be able to stand up before. But now, it's not like that. Because he says, God has pity on us and He's lead us. He guides us to what? Springs of water. Springs of water means foundation. Never ending water. So you will have this in your life. Never ending restoration. Don't forget that. And also, let's go to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 11. What does it say? And I will make all my mountains a road, and my highways shall be raised. When I heard this word, all burden went away. Do you understand what it means? Verse 11. I want you to go home today and read 8 to 13. One by one. It says, He will make a road on the mountain. Do you understand what it means? He will not take away your mountains. That's what I mean. He will make a way through the mountain. So problems are like mountains, right? You want this problem to go away. But God is not going to take away that mountain. He says, I will make a road from in that mountain. Just imagine this. I am here. This mountain does not let me see God's plan. I cannot see because of this big problem. It could be problems. It could be crisis, difficulties, etc. So many things are like mountains. But God says, I will not take this away, but He will make a way through that mountain. 
And that way is who? Christ. That's why you need to hold on to Christ. You have a problem? Confess. That's why, God, I need of Christ. Fill me of the grace of Christ. Pray that. And you will see that the mountains are not even big. They're so small. Because you see what? The way out from that mountain. If you know this, you're happy. If you don't know this, then you are unhappy. But now you need to know it and enjoy it. This is your blessing. Not only he says he will make a road on the mountains, but he will make highways that will be raised up. In other words, we thought that this was the only way of solving a problem. But God himself gave us his way to see the things. Don't forget that, okay? So Isaiah chapter 49, verse 12. What does it say? It says, we read it today, right? It says, Behold, this shall come from afar, and behold, this from the north and from the west, and this from the land of Cyrene. When you have this answer, all nations will, will come to you. Do you believe that? Do you really think that nations will come to you? You might think, well, I'm no one. I'm nobody. I have nothing. I'm not good at Bible. But is God, is, is God telling you, hey, you need to be expert in the Bible to have this? No, He's giving you as a promise. But those who hold on to the promise, restoration will come. This is an amazing and outstanding blessing and answer. Lastly, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 13. What does it say? It says, Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have confession on his afflicted. Now that you have all this blessing, you have the peace and the leisure to glorify God. Because our main purpose of living is glorifying God. So God will make everything so you can understand that He is the one that will restore you. And you have no choice to glorify Him. Have you ever been in that situation? That you come to this time that, ah, that's right, God, I was so stubborn. I was thinking of my own plans. I didn't see, I didn't notice. But now I know. That's why I glorify you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he says, through his son, the father is glorified. Do you understand that? You have Christ. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Through him, the father is glorified. Remember, your life is to glorify who? God. Not glorify yourself. Not glorify money. Not glorify success. Your life is to glorify who? God. Never forget that. The moment you forget this, you're forgetting about the promise. Second point. How... Uh, why God is giving us this blessing? Why God is giving us this blessing? Right? We all ask this, right? Why God is giving us these blessings? Because we need to restore our posterity. Do you understand what is posterity? How many of you here are married? Me. Over there. Kanzanim, right? Hendrika too, right? 
We all marry, right? We think about posterity more than you. But does that mean that you never think about posterity? Next generation? Our next generation is our future for church, for this gospel. Imagine yourself, if I die and didn't share this gospel to, the, to you, let's say, would you ever know the gospel? Maybe. With someone else, right? But I will never be able to enjoy, right? Do you understand? Being able to share this gospel to your next generation is the greatest blessing you can have. But you will save this posterity with the blessing and the answer of eternity. Eternity. No eternal. Eternity. Eternity. This is, I will not read it today. Isaiah 49 verse 15. Read that later. If you see a little bit, it says that this woman had a, a generation in the womb. But here, God already knew who was that, per, that baby, in other words. And also, why God is giving us this blessing is because we need to heal the field. Do you know how many people are sick? How many people are really being afflicted mentally, spiritually, and physically? What do you think it comes first? Physical or mental? What do you think? Actually, it's mental. When you're mentally afflicted, your body gets weak. But before being mentally afflicted, what is afflicted first? Spiritual. That's why we need to heal the spiritual things first. Then the mental and then the physical comes along. If you don't understand this, just look at the field. Just look at the people. People are suffering from many, many uh, mental problems. Many, many, many. One day I was, I think it was two days ago, I asked myself, am I depressed? You know? <laughs> am I depressed? Why am I crying so often? You know? <laughs> Secretly, okay? I just watched uh, uh, like a sentence or, or, or Bible verse or I listen to the word and I'm, I'm, I'm like crying. I'm like, why am I crying? Am I depressed? You know? So I was kind of, uh, I was kind of, you know, thinking, wow, let's see if I'm depressed. And I went to the internet, like survey if you're depressed. <laughs> so I took the test. It was like like 50 questions. I'm like, why am I doing this? But I wanted to know if I'm depressed. 50, ah, 50. And then at the end, <laughs> the result came out. Uh, you're, you're not depressed. Sick for uh, uh, counselor. I'm like, but why do I feel like I'm depressed, you know? Because the more you think of yourself, the more you think about the, 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 this earth, there's no hope. There's no hope. So, because I was thinking so many things, personally, church, family, everything, right? My, my brain was kind of depressed, you know? But more than brain, my heart was kind of depressed. So I quickly understood, ah, that's why in this earth there's no hope. But God gave us his only son to give us life. In him there's true hope. This is true healing. I can, I can guarantee you, those people who are sick, let them go inside the word. And they will heal. Not because they need that healing. It's because the word is living and active. Don't forget that. So you know now about me. I was depressed. Okay. But I'm. But service says I'm not. But probably I was spiritually depressed. There's actually a book about that. Spiritual depression. But uh, I understand, uh, the weaker that I am, I seek God more. 
That's why your weakness is your strength, because Christ is with you. And your strength in Christ will be evidences to glorify God. Don't forget that. And the third thing, that why God is giving us this blessing, is because He wants to save the world. He wants to do missions. Do you understand that? I think this part is very difficult to understand for a Christian, right? We think that war evangelization and missions is just for pastors. But that's not true. If you have this covenant, if you have the gospel, then you're called to save this. And after that, you can read Isaiah chapter 49. Verse 18 to 22. This is your homework, actually. Okay, When you go back home, read that. And if there's no world evangelization and missions in your life, I can tell you one thing. There's no meaning in your life. Do you think you were just called in this earth to just work and make money? I don't think so. I don't think so. Even though we have so many difficulties, even though we are so lacking and limited, God has given us this world evangelization and missions. Jesus called the people of Galilee. These people are fishers. They have nothing, actually. They were not known as experts or professionals. They have nothing. But Jesus selected and called him and did what? Gave them what? Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. It's just like that. War evangelization and missions. You know, I, uh, you know one of our sisters here is from the United States, right? No, I don't like United States. <laughs> Being honest, right? I don't know why. But I didn't like the United States. Because I was like, everybody's so proud of being American, right? If you're not American, you're nothing. That's kind of the feeling you get when you get to the immigration. But nowadays, it was much better. I, I went to Chicago and then uh, JFK, and they were treating me very well. I'm like, wow, America has changed. But I have scars from America, right? <laughs> but just being in America, I realize it's very multi-ethnic. It's very global. It's so big. Just looking at Chicago, huge. Just looking at JFK, Huge. And from all that, I'm just like a little dust. So a dust like me, this, impossible, we say. But then why God let me hear about this? So you can, so you can be successful in this earth? I don't think so. There's a reason. There's a reason why God, even though we're just a dust, God is giving us this. Because there's nothing impossible for God. If God wants to work through you for this, then He will do it. But the most important thing is what? You need to believe and enjoy this. I know it's hard to believe it. That's why you need the grace. So you can confess, God, use me for this evangelization. Probably I'm nothing, but use me for this evangelization. Because you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Conclusion of today. Start with prayer every day. The moment you wake up, start with a prayer. What prayer are you going to have? I think the best prayer that you can have in the morning is Thanksgiving. Start with that. If you don't have Thanksgiving, it's hard to know who you are. It's hard to know why you need to have a walk of faith. Remember, start your day with Thanksgiving. God, thank you for what? 
for salvation. I really want you to do this. When you wake up, the first thing you say, God, thank you for giving me salvation. And the second thing, God, thank you because I have Christ. You do that and you will see what will come to your heart. Your heart will be in joy, in thanksgiving. And now, when you start with the prayer, now, this week, just listen to the word once, one time a week. Or, if it's too much for you, two times a week. Okay? If it's too much for you. If you can do it two times a week, three times a week. If it's too easy for you, every day you can do it. Start with the word. That's why our EM team, they're to, from today, they're preparing a uh, summary of the uh, messages. So you can have it. So you can take it home and read it at least. All this worship is recorded through YouTube. But you know, you don't want to listen to me again, right? Right? So that's why much better we're going to just write it down and give it to you. So you can at least read it. And the best thing you can do is in the morning. Do it. And you will see that the first thing that comes to your heart is joy, peace. And from there, you will see what God would do in your life. So today, we just share about very short about the theme of this year, 2024. You have a portion, the desolate heritage. Nobody wants to go, but God will give it to you. Nobody is interested, but God is restoring it for you. Don't feel alone. Don't think that you're alone. God is with you, giving you all this blessing so you can glorify Him and save these three things, the posterity, healing, and world missions. Let's pray. God, thank you for giving us these tremendous answers that you have given us through Christ. Let us really enjoy what you have given to us in your salvation so we can really confess that you have given us everything in your Son. Throughout this week, give us the grace so we can confess and also enjoy that you are giving us the portion of the desolate heritage so we can be witnesses for you and for this earth that is dying. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the solution of, for all problems, and by the infinite love of our God, and by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be upon all of your people who are holding on to the promises and restoration that you have given us throughout your word. Be now and forever. Amen. Uh, thank you very much for uh, today. I know that um, it's the first worship of the year for EM. As you know, we have changed our time of worship for EM. It's 2 p.m. Uh, the reason is because before this worship, we have the multi department worship at 1240. Uh, one thing you need to be uh, uh, announced is that every third week, Every third Sunday, we'll have worship together with the whole entire department. It means that every third Sunday, third week Sunday, will be at 12.40 p.m., the worship. 12.40 p.m. So we will announce it in Kakao, but just to let you know that we are having this uh, schedule because uh, that's the uh, that's what I am available now to to give worships. So, don't forget we change our time two p.m. from one thirty to two p.m. and every third Sunday we have worship here at twelve forty. So, uh, also uh, those who were not together with us in Happy New Year, Happy New Year again for all of you, and Merry Christmas again. Uh, it's good to have. Hendrika and Annette back uh, in our worship. 
Also, uh, Estrellita, Daniela, um, Bianca, and Cynthia, and Aralia. Thank you for always coming. Uh, I think Bianca is the first time or second time here? Second time, right? I was, I was close. Second time. Uh, we welcome you. And you know, usually we don't talk about the uh, birthday, but Aralia is having a birthday today. So it's, it's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Aralia. Uh, I hope that God keep blessing you and continuously uh, enjoy. And also we have our Tami Chipsanin family here for the first time. Uh, and also uh, her husband uh, was always here, but now I think they have the time and to come here. Uh, we welcome you today also again. And also we have our Changnunimdol. Uh, we have our Changnunim elders here. We have uh, Song Song Changnunim and also Cheongbe Changnunim, which they are uh, with the uh, Philippines team. So they are here. Even though it's so hard for, to understand English, they are here to pray and to see and really support you in anything you need in prayer and also in other things. Thank you very much.